When I learned that Northampton High School Theater was putting on Urine Town, I couldn't help but see themes in the show that correlated to our country today. I spoke with the cast and crew of Urine Town and asked if they believe musical theater acts as commentary to our society. So tell me a little bit about Urine Town. Tell me about the story and the summary itself. Okay, so um, it is a musical that um, was actually created by people that weren't necessarily musical theater makers. They were from, it's a, a theater company in Chicago that was an experimental theater company that made it um, kind of almost as a joke. Um, so the characters are kind of these classic uh, Mm, archetypal characters. There's the the big bad corporate boss. Um, there's the ingenue who's his daughter. There's the hero that is going to fight against the revolutionary who starts the revolution. My character is kind of the musical theater trope hero. He's kind of a combination of all like the classic musical theater heroes. He has to pee to, yeah, I mean, he has to uh, pay to pee. He has to wait in line. He goes there every single morning early. And you know he um, he pays a fee and he barely has any money, but he's still trying to make by so he can use the bathroom. Uh, he starts out as like a assistant custodian at the really at the low level urinal where you have to pay, and he realizes that people he he meets this girl Hope who he finds out later is the big boss's daughter, and he realizes that it's so wrong that we're making people pay to pee, or at least he thinks it is. So he leads a rebellion and people all pay for free. And eventually he, you find out that you're in town where you go if you can't pay to pee or you break the laws. Basically when they say you're sending you to you're in town, they're just throwing you off the top of the building. And then what, what's lovely in this is that it uses the kind of archetypal, super simple caricatures of those characters and then actually complicates them. So the, the message of the corporate boss is actually, if you listen in, inside it, is actually environmentalist. He's actually the environmentalist, but he's the bad guy. And then the, the revolutionary is actually like oversimplifying it and actually undermining the, the natural environment. So there's these things that now, if we think about it in our context now, they've done a great job of making it so that nobody's all right, and nobody's all wrong, but there's definitely this very, very strong and very reflective of our real world class divide that, um, like one of the actors said yesterday, she was like, I feel like you're in town is Flint, Michigan right now. In 2014, an unelected emergency manager appointed by Michigan Governor Rick Snyder changed the city of Flint's water source from the Detroit system to the Flint River. In theory, this was an excellent way to save millions of dollars. The stark reality that hit Flint weeks later, however, was unimaginable. Water from the Flint River was not only infested with bacteria, but also began to host cancerous chemicals. This water began to break down the city's pipelines, causing lead to bleed into the water, giving lead poisoning to a plethora of Flint citizens. So the people that can't bathe in the water, they can't drink the water, use the water for anything, which is necessary in our daily lives. I know a bunch of people from Michigan went down to Washington for a rally saying that we want our water pipes clean because no one was doing anything to help these people for a very long time. And basically Urinetown connects to that because Urinetown is um, Cladwell who, earns, who owns Urinetown Company he makes the people pee, um, they make, he makes the people pay to pee because the water, because the water system in Urine Town is very bad. Basically, you're in good company. They don't, they don't really uh, have a role in giving back to the people. They basically just take. And it's a one-way street, pretty much. They take cash and their whole thing is they go to Rio with that cash and then they don't really give anything back. The world's largest water bottling company, Nestle, owns wells in Muscoda County, just a few hours north of Flint. Nestle receives $13 million in tax breaks to pump nearly 200 gallons of water a minute from Lake Michigan. So not only does the city of Flint pay the highest water bills in the state of Michigan for poisonous water, they are also forced to buy bottled water from corporate companies like Nestle. Nestle, Coca-Cola, Pepsi Company, and Walmart recently reported that they would donate up to 6.5 million bottles of water to school-aged children in Flint. This would provide nearly 10,000 students with sufficient water for the rest of 2016. Because these are, these are people's lives. They, we all depend on water. 
but the whole show basically is a message to go green because your in town could happen. We would one day, if our water systems are so bad, we, you know, the whole U.S. could be like Flint, basically, like where where we wouldn't have, where we couldn't use our water, or we would have to even pay to pee. So it's we, there are times when, as a theater maker, you, that happens where you pick a play, thinking like this is kind of resonant right now, and then it only becomes more and more resonant. It's crossing over in a way that's a little frightening, and this show is definitely doing that. So this is um, the first musical I've ever done that is a it, that has a big message to it behind behind like all the goofiness that we're meant to do because it is a very clowny and we are making fun of other plays as well. It, there's a huge message behind this saying and I, I think the reason why I see is as Flint because what's going on in Flint isn't necessarily connected to what we're showing here and basically um, what the, the meaning behind our play is just you know you have to you know um, be thankful that you are in like in a town like Northampton that we have great water pipes and everyone here is healthy. The reason I'm a theater maker is because I believe that we the, the ability for theater and story in particular to transport us um, is very real. I think it's actually uh, something that we are is ingrained in us as humans as a survival skill that we learn by story. And because of that, I think story is actually like really important and so powerful that we need to be careful as theater as any storyteller. We need to be careful of the stories we tell. Um, and so, absolutely, when picking a show, I think about. How is it going to impact us? How are we going to think about it? the people that are taking part in it? How are they going to interact with it? What transformations are they going to have? Questions they're going to be left with? And with the audience as well, even in, I think musicals are kind of, um, they often, we think of them more just as entertainment. So I was looking for something that we could really make everybody stop and think a second, while also stopping and listening to some really good music. Yeah. Okay, no, a nice sturdy bump, 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 bump.